again, this is David Panush from the Edward Burke School in Washington, D.C. And this is a lecture on Chapter 6 from Predictably Irrational by Dan Ariely. And this chapter is The Influence of Arousal. And I, I warn you now that it's a little bit R-rated, so uh, if you're not old enough for R-rated movies, then you probably don't want to read the chapter. Uh, just listen to my lecture and you'll, you'll get the gist. Main idea in this chapter is, again, we have a predicting issue. And we looked a lot at this in Stumbling on Happiness in the first book, how sometimes we're really bad at making predictions about the future. And in particular, we learned in that book, we're really bad at making predictions about our future emotions. And we, under, we, don't, we, we fail to believe that we will ever, ever feel differently later than we feel now. So in this uh, chapter, what we're talking about is physiological arousal and how that changes the way we feel. Once it changes the way we feel, perhaps it changes the way we would make decisions. And this chapter demonstrates that rational, intelligent people are simply unable to predict how they will feel when they're in an aroused state. And arousal takes on all kinds of different connotations. But physiological arousal basically just means worked up. You can be worked up in a lot of different ways. We'll talk about that in just a second. Basically, you've got a cold state and a hot state. And we're human beings. When we are in a cold state, we're calm, we're dispassionate, we can make rational decisions, we can think slowly, and, um, and basically our prefrontal cortex, the executive functioning, rational decision-making part of our brain has time uh, to balance things out and make a decision, think things through. A hot state means that we're aroused, and that's physiological arousal, which means there, there's actual changes that go on in your body. Adrenaline starts pumping, cortisol, stress hormones start pumping. Uh, you, we get you know, skin sensitivity, our, we breathe harder and heavier. Um, all of those things are actual physical changes that go on, and we tend to make decisions more quickly. And when you make decisions more quickly, you don't always give the prefrontal cortex time to step in and say, whoa, you know, let's think about this a little more rationally. It's the emotional reaction, uh, tends to be more irrational, and essentially you are aroused. Now, that's the difference between a cold state and a hot state. And I want to just say that aroused doesn't necessarily mean sexually aroused. You could be stressed, you could be excited, you could be scared, you could be angry, um, you could be ha happy, you know, whatever it is. Um, it's not just about sexual aroused. Although, of course, that counts. So, uh, Dan Ariely wanted to ask, well, do we make different decisions when we're in a cold state versus a hot, a hot state? Um, so he basically gave uh, a questionnaire with a bunch of questions to college students, college male students on, uh, at the Berkeley campus, and asked them how interested they were in certain sexual activities or moral activities or how safe they would be when they were having sex. Okay, that, this was in a cold state, so they're, they're in a lab somewhere or in a calm, quiet place, and they're just filling out a questionnaire. They can think rationally, and they can predict how interested they would be in these sorts of things. They answer, okay? Then, uh, and here's where it gets a little tricky, uh, they got these subjects to take a laptop and um, become aroused, and as they were aroused, they had to answer the questions at that moment as well. Same questions, um, but now in a very different state, okay? And the results were pretty astounding. Uh, when they were aroused, they were 72% more interested in odd sexual activities. Now I'm putting that in quotes, and the book has some examples of that, but you know, not your basic, normal, straightforward, um, traditional sexual activity, okay? When they were aroused, they were 136% more interested in engaging in immoral activities. And again, the exact definitions are in the book. Um, and 25% more than predicted said, when they were aroused, I don't need a condom. Let's go for it. Okay? Um, and what this suggests is that our ability to make good decisions may be diminished by arousal. So when we're in a hot state, we may not make the best decisions. When we were in a cold state, we weren't that interested in these odd sexual activities or immoral activities or having sex without a condom. But once we're aroused, we tend to throw some of that stuff out the window. Um, the question 
I think we need to ask ourselves is how much can we generalize from this experiment? And that's something we're going to talk about. But at least for the sake of, of the rest of this lecture, let's assume that we can generalize a little bit. So let's assume that we do have a problem uh, with our decisions and our decision making when we're in an aroused state. Well, what should we do about it once we know that that's a problem? Well, maybe if we're angry uh, and we're about to type off a response to somebody or send a text or send an email, we should not send it. You know, type it if it helps you, but then step away from it for hours or days uh, before you actually send it, because you're probably not going to be making the best decision. Uh, similarly, you know, maybe a, a major purchase that just has you really excited. Uh, you know, uh, before you buy, you know, the sports car, maybe you should um, discuss it with somebody who might have a different opinion and, and pause. Basically, taking a step back to try and get yourself out of the hot state and into the cold state before you make a decision. All right, so two areas that Ariely looks at uh, in terms of ways that maybe using this data, we should do things differently if we want to achieve uh, our ends better. So the point of some sex education is to reduce dangerous and uh, potentially harmful sexual activity that might lead to disease or pregnancy. So we do the education in the classroom, but when a child is in the classroom, for the most part, they're in a cold state. They're rational, and they're calm, and they can process information and make the right decision. Would you use a condom? Yeah, of course I would. You just told me how important it was, and I understood what you were saying. But the problem is that in a hot state, and there's nothing uh, probably as hot as sexual arousal, then all of a sudden we know from this, from this experiment people aren't going to make the same decision. So one thing we can do is put condoms everywhere. Make sure you've got them around, um, because then if you do make a bad decision, at least you've got it right there and you make it easy to use. Um, Ariely recommends that sex education should focus on strategies to deal with the emotions that accompany sexual arousal. And the trouble is, once you're aroused, you can't make good decisions. So although it sounds very uh, prude to say it, perhaps if your goal is simply to never engage in risky sexual behavior, then you can't engage in sexual behavior at all until maybe you're more mature. So avoiding temptation is easier than overcoming it. But how to say no before any temptation takes hold, uh, that's one way of going out it. Um, but people being people, we know they're going to get aroused and they're going to get tempted. Understanding that they're probably going to make the decision that's not the best one in that moment, then let's make sure they all got condoms, at least. So that's his idea there. Uh, the next thing he talks about is safe driving, especially for teenagers. We're going to watch a little instructional video first. That's not bad for a quadruped. you got to check your mirror. Just side of your eye. Side of your eye. Hey, they're chasing us. Come on, make it fun. Just in case you couldn't see it on the video, I don't know how well that came off. That is uh, Bill Murray in the movie Ground Groundhog Day, and he's uh, he's got a groundhog with him, and he's he's driving angry. So he's in a hot state at that moment. Uh, you don't want to be operating heavy machinery when you're emotional. All right, we know the stats. Teenagers are 40% more likely to get into an accident than an adult. But what happens if you put another teenager in the car, now they're twice as likely to get in that. Twice is more, so 80% more likely. And then put a third teenager, now they're 120% more likely. And the idea there, the problem is, there tend to be more in an aroused state when other kids are around. Uh, you know, joking and laughing and talking about emotional things, etc. Okay? So, what can we do about it? Well, he talks about some things, again, you want to avoid 
you know it's going to happen, so you either avoid it altogether, don't let them drive, or you let them drive and put some dampeners down and try and take people from the hot state down into the cold state. So maybe if the car is going very fast and you've got a program with the team driver, it hits 60 miles an hour and it literally won't go any faster or it actually slows down. Um, maybe uh, erratic driving uh, turns the music off. Like you can't listen to music if you're going, if the car is swerving, or again if you're going too fast. You can program all this stuff into the cars. Or maybe if you're going too fast, or you take a turn, or you hit the brakes too hard, the car automatically calls a parent and puts them on the speaker in the car. You know, um, so any of these things could easily be programmed into cars. And again, it's sort of policy with an understanding of real human uh, irrationality and real human frailties as opposed to sort of shutting your eyes and saying, oh, we're rational and we'll be rational in all situations. Well, this chapter is suggesting that if you're aroused, you're not as rational as if you are in a cold state. So just being aware that we are prone to making the wrong decision when gripped by intense emotion may help us. We could do things differently. So that's something uh, for us to think about.